Uh, welcome to the 30 minute second show of this morning. Our next speaker will be Jorge Mejia from Universidad Nacional de Colombia, Sede Medellin. And he will talk about on the uniqueness properties of solutions of the ZK equation. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank the organizers, professors Linares and Fried for inviting me to participate in this conference. It's a great pleasure for me to be here in Rio. What I'm going to talk about is a joint work with Eddie Bustamante and Pedro Isasa. In this talk, I will consider the Saharov Kuznetsov equation. This is a nonlinear evolution equation, which is a bidimensional generalization of the Cortebec debris equation. This equation appears in mathematical models to describe the propagation of nonlinear ion acoustic waves in a magnetized plasma. The unknown function, the unknown function in the equation is a function of the space variables x and y and of the time variable t. From now on, we will be, for a fixed time t, we will denote by u of t this space function from R2 to R. With respect to the local and global well closeness for the Cauchy problem associated to the equation CK and modified CK, uh, for the modified CK, the nonlinear term is u squared dx u. We have, among others, the following articles. In 1995, Paminski proved local and global well closeness for the CK in Sobolev spaces HM with M integer greater than or equal to 1. Later, Biagioni and Linares proved local and global well closeness for modified CK in H1. Uh, <clears throat> in 2009, Linares and Pastor proved local uh, well closeness for the CK and for the modified CK in solar spaces HS with S real greater than 3 over 4. More recently, Linares, Pastor, and Sot uh, proved local well closeness for the Cauchy problem in a cylinder. In other words, with, y, with the equation periodic in the variable y, they prove this local well closeness in HS for S greater than 3 over 2. The main goal in our talk is to establish sufficient conditions uh, on the behavior of the difference of two solutions of the CK equation at two different times, which guarantee than that they are equal. More precisely, we will prove that if, you, if we have two sufficiently smooth solutions of the CK equation, with this polynomial decay at infinity, such that their difference at times t equals zero and t equals one, decay decays exponentially with this order, then they must coincide. Graphically, this means if, if the uh, horizontal axis represents the space R2 and the vertical axis represents the time T, and in, this, in, this, in these two lines, T equals zero and T equals one, the difference of the two solutions uh, has this exponential decay, then 
the difference must be zero in the whole band R2 cross zero one. This type of results has been studied for many evolution equations. Let me mention only three previous results. In 2004, Pante proved that if we have a sufficiently smooth solution of the CK such that for every t in the interval 0, 1, the support of t of t is contained in a, in a common compact set, then u must be identically, identically equals to 0. In other words, is the solution u is zero in these two zones, then it must be zero in the whole strip R2 cross zero one. Uh, Pante used uh, complex analysis methods introduced by Burgain. Mm. In 2011, we improved the Pantes result. We proved that if we have a sufficiently smooth solution of the CK equation, such that for two times T equals zero and T equals one, the solution has compact support, then, then it must be identically equals to zero. Uh, <coughs> Uh, we must point out that in this case, the comparison is between an arbitrary solution U and the zero solution. Uh, to obtain this result, uh, we, you, we used a method developed by Koenig, Ponce, and Vega in their article on the KDV in 2002. We combine a priori estimates which guarantee uniform exponential decay for all times between zero and one with Carleman type estimates to conclude that the support of the space function U of T is contained in a common compact set and then we use the Pantes result. In 2007, Scauriasa, Koenig, Ponce, and Vega prove that if we have two strong solutions of the KDV equation with this polynomial decay at infinity such that at the times t equals zero and t, equal, t equals one, the, uh, the difference decays exponentially with this order for x positive then the two solutions must be equal. This result comes from the confrontation between two types of estimates, Carleman type estimates versus a lower estimate. This is the methodology that we will use to prove our theory. We will follow this article. Now, I, I will give you a brief sketch of the proof of our result. Uh, as I said before, we follow the scheme developed by Scauriasa, Kenny, Ponce, and Vega. In, we use a uh, Carleman type estimates and a lower estimate. Our Carleman type estimates are simpler in the following sense. In the following sense, we use uh, spaces LPT, LQXY, of the band D given by this product, and LPX, LQYT, where the indexes P and Q are one, two, or infinity, which enables us uh, to use elementary properties of the Fourier transform. 
The first step in the proof is to establish two Carleman type estimates. The first estimate expresses certain continuity properties of the inverse operator of the linear part of the CK equation. Uh, this estimate says us that the mm, this weighted L infinity T L2 X Y norm in the band D of W is bounded by this L2 norm, this, this weighted L2 norm of W at the times T equals zero and T equal one T equals one plus this weighted L1 T L2 X Y norm in the band D of the linear part of the CK applied to W. The second, the second Carleman estimate uh, says us that this weighted L2 norm in L, L2 norm, no, this weighted L infinity X L2 Ty norm in the band D of W and its, de and its spatial derivatives up to the order two are bounded, is bounded by this weighted H3 norm of W at the times T equals zero and T equals one plus this weighted L1X, L2 Ty norm in the band D of the linear part of the CK equation applied to W. These two estimates are valid for sufficiently smooth functions W uh, with compact support in the band D. Uh, let us observe that in this second estimate there is a dependence between lambda and beta in this exponent. Lambda must be greater than or equal to certain multiple of beta. Uh, we will describe, yeah, briefly, yeah, we will describe the proof of this second estimate of this type. In the case of the second derivative uh, of W with respect to the variable X. For the variables C, eta, and tau in the frequency space corresponding to the variables X, Y, and T, let us consider this multiplier associated to the inverse operator capital T, zero, of this application. Mm -hmm. And the multiplier M to zero, given by this product, associated to the composition of the operator capital, capital T zero, Tx minus lambda square. Uh, our second estimate will be a consequence from the continuity of this operator from the space L1x, L2, Ty, to L infinity x, L2, Ty in the space, in the three-dimensional three space R3. Uh, this continuity can be expressed, expressed by this inequality, where these two signs denote respectively the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform in R3. In order to get this estimate, we, we will prove this one, where this symbol denotes the inverse Fourier transform with respect to the variable x. Uh, in this inequality, the constant c is independent from eta and tau. 
Let us observe that the, our multiplier n to zero can be written as this fraction with the with d where where v is this complex variable and p is this cubic polynomial in d. At the points eta tau in R2, where the polynomial P has three simple roots, roots Vj using uh, the composition in partial fraction, we can, we can write this multiplier in this form. Vj are the roots of the polynomial P and these coefficients do not depend on the variable C and are bounded for eta and tau outside are a small set surrounding the points eta tau where the polynomial P has multiple roots. From this fact, from the boundedness of these coefficients, uh, it follows uh, it follows these estimates, and from these estimates, we obtain our Carleman estimate. The second step in our proof is to establish a lower estimate for, for the L2 norm of the difference of two solutions of the CK equation in this annulus domain, R minus one R, which depends on R. Let us suppose that the difference U of two solutions, U1 and U2 of the CK equation in in this, in this set, this set is a, uh, the unique circle across the time interval r, little r, one minus little r, with little r, some positive between zero and one half. Let us suppose that this L2 norm in this set for you is positive. Then we get this a lower bound for the L, for AR of U, for this L2 norm of U, and its derivative is up to the order two in this annulus. Uh, this, this upper, this lower bound for AR of U is a consequence of this lemma which expresses which, which expresses a continuity property of the inverse operator of the linear part of the CK equation uh, from L2 to L2 with this weight. In this weight, the exponent C is a function which depends on X, Y, T, and a certain parameter alpha, which we will use uh, later. This uh, estimate is valid for functions G with this uh, smoothness, and such that in, at the times t equals zero and t equals one uh, are, are identically zero, and with support contain it in this set. The final step of our proof is to confront the two types of estimates, the, the Carleman type estimates with the lower estimate. Uh, let U1 and U2, two solutions of the CK equation Satisfy, satisfying the hypothesis of our theory. Let us recall 
that at the times t equals zero and t equals one, uh, the difference uh, must be have this exponential decay. Uh, we reasoning by contradiction. Suppose that the difference is, is not equal to zero. Then for some set QR given by this, by the product that we have those of generality, uh, we perform uh, translation in order to have that this L2 norm of U is positive, where QR is the unit spatial circle cross the time interval little r, one minus little r. From the lower estimate, uh, when we take 2MR instead R and this value for the parameter alpha, we obtain this lower bound for A2MR of U. Let us recall that we suppose that this L2 norm is positive. Here, the constant M is the constant appearing in the second Carleman estimate. Now, applying the Carleman estimate to the truncation W of U given by this product, phi U, where phi is a radial function of the space variables such that phi is identically equal to, to one in this annulus and, vanish, and vanishes outside the annulus R n plus one, where n is taken in such a way that two MR is less than n, we obtain this upper bound for A two MR of U. Here, HR of lambda is this expression uh, where is the, is, is the H3 norm of this weight multiplied by U of zero on, and U of one, the H3 norm outside the ball of radius R. Taking into account these conditions, and taking this value for lambda, we can prove that HR of lambda is bounded, bound which depends on the positive A. And in this manner, using, using this inequality, we obtain this upper bound for A to MR of U. But we also ha uh, have an, a lower bound for A to R. If we, if we combine these two bounds, we obtain this inequality. Let us observe that we can take A positive sufficiently large in order to have this coefficient negative. It would imply when R goes to infinity that this L2 norm is equal to zero. In this manner, we get a contradiction. And finally, we can conclude that our difference must be identically equals to zero, which concludes the proof of our theory. Well, that's all that I wanted to say today. Thank you very much for your attention.